everyone, I'm Ninjar Das and today I'm going to walk you through a tutorial where we'll see how to install the Anaconda package which is basically a, a Python distribution. Basically it uh, gives you Python as well as a host of other libraries associated with Python and it's basically a, a complete environment that has all the necessary packages needed for machine learning and data science. So if you install anaconda once then you get to use all the packages and you don't have to worry about installing each package every time you need some so there's that and we then we also I'll show you how to use a direct python and install the libraries using pip3 command uh, it's it's uh, it uses directly python so and you don't have to install an anaconda package or like you can just install the libraries you need and keep working so you have to install the libraries individually uh, so that and then we will see how to use a jupyter notebook which is a very powerful uh, medium for writing code in python and doing data science because as you will see like uh, in python what happens is like you write the whole block of code and then uh, when the you have written the whole block of code only then can you execute and see the output but in jupyter notebooks you can write uh, pieces of code chunks of code and then execute it and see the output and that makes it easier to debug as well as lets you individually run parts of the program so that you can tweak things here and there and get the outputs as and when required so we'll see how powerful jupyter notebook is and then in the jupyter notebook environment we will explore the libraries pandas numpy and matplotlib which are three basic python libraries for data science and machine learning we'll see that and that will complete our tutorial Okay, so let's first see how to install Anaconda package and get started with the environment. So first let me take you to browser and there just type anaconda.com there's your website. Go to the website and uh, navigate to products and here you have your individual edition you have individual edition and then click on download and this will lead you to windows mac os and linux choose your os environment for me it is 64 bit windows so i'll choose this and then it will start downloading so for now uh, i have already downloaded it because you can see it's a big file 457 mb so i'll just i have it downloaded i'll just go there and launch it launch the installer let me close it and now let's launch the installer so here is the installer launching it So here is the setup. Do next. IAP. Uh, note here you are installing it for just one individual. So do just me. Uh, if you have other users on your PC, you can do all the users. And that will kind of, I mean, you have to be the admin for doing that. So make sure these things are checked properly. Then do next. Select the location where you want to put this. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's asking for 2.7 GB of space so it will kind of unload all the packages necessary for python and data science so it will do that then i do next and then it asks for add anaconda to uh, my path environment variable it's not recommended do not do that it, it can cause things to act weirdly it's not recommended do not do that uh, registered anaconda 3 as my default python 3.8 point to notice that if you already have python 3.8 uh, installed in your pc then uncheck this box 
I already have Python in my PC, so I'll uncheck this box. Uh, if you don't have, then you can check this. So what it basically does is it basically the Anaconda 3 itself has a Python installation, Python di distribution, I'd say, Python distribution inside it, and so like it will make that distribution of Python your default Python 3.8 distribution. So that will if you don't have Python 3.8 from before, so that will let you run uh, Python codes as well. Uh, in my case, I already have Python 3.8, so I'm unchecking this, and then I click on install. <music> Now the anaconda package is installed uh, I kind of uh, missed showing you the previous test which would be that when after the installation of the bar would be complete and you click next and then it will be done I think I got it but here comes the crucial step uh, so once the package is installed you finish uh, loading it and all so after that uh, how to start a Jupyter notebook uh, using anaconda so for that go to your windows And then like if you are not working on Windows, uh, then find this thing Anaconda prompt from wherever like terminal or anywhere. So do that and find Anaconda prompt and open it. So now this Anaconda prompt is running. So this Anaconda prompt is running at location uh, users Richard. So this is the uh, directory uh, where the Anaconda package was installed, right? So it starts running from there. So now if you want to launch Jupyter Notebook in some other folder, just do a CD. For me it would be in documents slash This is where I have my most of programming files. So I'll change there. And then you have to type a Jupyter notebook that's it now it will open a Jupyter notebook in your Jupyter environment in your browser <coughs> uh, so let's see let's wait for a minute it's starting the python shell uh, the kernel is starting let's wait actually like this system here it started it has like it's running a python compiler on the background and giving you an interface through your web browser so that is it so it took some time to start running and the browser is taking some time to load and just a second yeah there you go so you can now see that you have all the files and directories and all everything listed here so this root folder this is your uh, where I opened this that would be your C users nature documents python coding this is where this uh, folder has started so now that it has started so you you can see like all the files and all are present here so here like we have the notebooks right so uh, these i by n b these are your notebook files so what if you want to start a new notebook just do a new uh, click on new yeah so there you can see notebook options are python 3 and there are other things like text file folder and terminal so i'll uh, select python 3 if python 2 is also loaded maybe it will show python 2 as well so let's start a python 3 notebook it's setting up yeah yeah there it is so this is your notebook environment typical notebook environment uh, first see here this is your file name it's untitled so let's change it let me set it to fourth notebook i already have three notebooks from before so let me set it to fourth notebook so this is your fourth notebook uh, this is your file name right then you have uh, here the sections are uh, file let's see what there are there are new notebook options open options 
make a copy save as rename save and checkpoint so what is a checkpoint a checkpoint is basically a snapshot of the state of your notebook so <clears throat> while working uh, you keep on changing the codes and uh, making some additions and deletions so as and when it happens so you can keep on um, keeping a list of checkpoints so for now if i go uh, see like there's a next option is revert to a checkpoint so with the checkpoint what you can do is you not only save the notebook as it is now but also create a marker like this is the point like if you want to go back to it at a later time you can just like this this revert option so this revert to checkpoint so here are the list of checkpoints uh, there's only one checkpoint here because i mean i know alterations have been made till now so it's Sunday, December 27, 2020, 16, uh, 6, 16 p.m. So that is your notebook. Uh, this is the one checkpoint I can go back to uh, if I wish to. So there's this option and there are print preview and there are download as option as well. So you can have it uh, like you can download the whole of the notebook in, a, in different formats. HTML, Latex, Markdown, IPy, NB is your notebook format itself. So you can download it uh, directly in IPy, NB format. You can also have PDF and uh, Python files. Uh, so there are multiple options. You can check that and this close and halt. It's for closing a file uh, standard thing. So here under edit you have now this is a new thing. Cut cells, copy cells, delete cells. So what are cells basically? So cells are uh, cells are your these blocks. The blocks in blue or uh, green. So these are your cells see so in cells what is a cell a cell uh, is a can be of two types if you see here it's code or markdown and raw nv convert and heading are there but like mostly we use code and markdown so code is your code cell is your uh, block of code that can be executed at one go so uh, this concept of cell in jupyter is that like you have a block of code say five lines or ten lines uh, these many lines of code that you want to run at the same time and you want to keep the other uh, outputs and like other code same as for now you don't want to make changes in them but you need to run only these many uh, files uh, uh, I mean lines of code so for that you have these cells so put the lines of code which are to be run at the same time in the same cell and then run it here you have run option you can run it and what is markdown markdown is basically a text uh, writings uh, what should i say like um, it's kind of html kind of thing so you can like format and write text and like that is used to like add description to your code basically so we'll see that so in edit option you have this cut cells and copy cells and all these things move cell up and down all this uh, most of it has also shortcuts here this is for moving cell up this is for moving cell down so for example this is my cell uh, in this shell let me write a code is equals to zero see all right so now i'll run it run fine now suppose i print s run it again you get output zero so suppose now i want to move this block of code up so i press this and see the code and its output goes up so this is how and uh, this is for bringing it down so fine this option is for adding cells insert cell below so you can insert cells below this is for uh, save and checkpoint this is uh, for your interrupting the kernel so basically like when you are running a piece of code suppose like i mean there's some uh, like you suddenly realize that the code you are running is uh, like you want to stop the uh, execution for some reason so you press this and then that will stop the execution this is your replay I restart the kernel so like uh, we'll see under the kernel option what is that so first let's check insert insert cell above and below and there you have cell so in cell option you have run cells which is shortcut is control plus enter then you have run cells and select below so what is run cells and select below run cells and select below means basically you run this block of code and then move the control see this green highlighted thing this is your control so the control is in this cell now so you move it to the next cell when you press shift and enter yeah so that is for it uh, cell uh, 
uh, run cells so you have run all as well run all above and run all below run all means run all the blocks but uh, remember the blocks are run sequ sequentially so essentially like the first block the topmost block will be evaluated first then the next and then the next and so on so that is the idea so uh, you can also do run all above and all below so like i mean presently i'm in this cell so you can run it like i mean run all the cells below it with that run all below option and all so you have cell type c code marked down you know and you convert and there are shortcuts as well y and m and yeah so you have uh, current output so all output you can clear all output if like you suppose like you want to make a new version of the notebook you want to clear all output and run it again so do a uh, clear uh, output and run it again so in kernel so what is the concept of the kernel now kernel is basically a python compiler that is running uh, in the background of this interface so here you can see see a kernel started see a kernel started this is your uh, like uh, instance of the kernel so uh, like a kernel is uh, like a it's kind of a python compiler that is running see name python 3 so it's a python 3 compiler that is running in the background that lets all your codes in this notebook get executed so yeah so you have options interrupt so you can stop the kernel you can restart it uh, restart and clear output so suppose you have run all the codes and like i mean it's become very uh, congested and all so you can then do a restart and clear output so it will restart the kernel and clear all the output and then maybe you can do run all or something so here you have another option restart and run all which directly will kind of run all the restart the kernel and run all the cells so uh, yeah you also have uh, you also have shut down and change kernel option but like i mean since there's only python 3 so you cannot make a change now uh, yeah so that is it mostly so this is a jupyter notebook environment let me show you some markdown things uh, let's go to markdown yeah so markdown suppose like i mean the hash you can type a heading so this is your heading and then maybe you can write some text here so once again when you run the code control plus enter so then you get see a heading and some text below so you can check out uh, markdown options uh, in the notebook that i'll show you later there like we'll see some markdown examples as well and there are like resources in the net where you can check out how to write in markdown yeah so okay so we understood the jupyter notebook environment so when you close this uh, just check like it's unsaved changes are there in the notebook so let's save yeah so it's uh, saved now so yeah so okay now i can close this notebook and all the things get saved fine so now i close this browser so but like when i close this browser the uh, kernel is still running because uh, like i mean i just closed the browser like the interface i closed but the background process is still running so how to close it i think it's with uh, control c yeah control c interrupted kernel shut down So uh, shutdown happened. Yeah. So we have to. Yeah. So like I mean, just close this terminal, and your kernel is over. So you have executed. Okay. That's about Jupyter environment. Now we will move on to the next part, which is how to uh, work in Jupyter notebook and show you some libraries and examples of code in the Jupyter Notebook.